So I'm on a smoothie kick because I keep buying produce that keeps going bad. So I need a way to put it in something. There is something very like drinking a salad about it, but I'm kind of into it. Hi, hello, it's Kendall here. And if you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skillet biscuit? And happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, Saturday is when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies and a Beat. The series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. Before we get started, I have a very, very important announcement. We have another member to the Squishmallow family. I introduced them last week, but they weren't here yet. I love you so much. <laughs> the avocado. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. This is Oliver, the avocado. I think that's what I'm gonna name him. You make me want a green goddess salad. That's gonna be lunch for today. <laughs> But having a maladaptive addiction to plushies is not free. Send it over to Admiral Kenny so that I can, um, no, I can't buy any more of you. I literally am running out of space to put you. But there's a Pikachu one coming out in the fall. And I want the Pikachu one coming out in the fall. And a Snorlax. Anyway, sending it over to Admiral Kenny. Thank you. Hello everyone, it's Admiral Kenny to let you know that today's video is sponsored by ThreadUp, the online thrifting store that allows you to have only the best part of thrifting because traditional thrifting low-key kind of sucks. <laughs> I love the idea of upcycling things, getting things used for a cheaper price and also fewer things going in landfills. But as a plus size person scrounging through bins to find something that will fit and look nice, is truly annoying. <laughs> ThreadUp is a store that allows you to see everything that they have completely and utterly organized so that you can find something that's in your size, in your style, just look at it, be quick, get what you want and go baby. And that, that is the future. <laughs> and because it is thrifting, it allows you to get stuff from brands that you've never heard of, brands that you love, and you're able to find something that is new and unique and you know that not everybody in their mom is gonna have it. And you'll be able to get it at a big discount because ThreadUp offers discounts as high as 90%. And that's before you use my code down in the description box to get an extra 35% off your first order and free shipping. I'm gonna show you some of the things I got. First off, this is shirt. It's giving like, am I not giving you like black Velma? I really like it. it I, I need to get like a brown skirt so that I can give you like Velma, right? I'm feeling real jinkies. <laughs> Apparently this was originally $71 from Lane Bryant, $71. Oh my God. And for this, I ended up paying $26.49. I also got this dress. This was a ruling from Old Navy. I do like it, but it's a little bit big around the midriff, but that's fine. I'll just wear it on days when I have a food baby. It was originally $43 and I was able to get it for $19.81. I also got this other dress from Eloquy. It has a high neck, long sleeves. There's like a bell sleeve and it's just like really nice and fitted in a way that's still comfortable. A little ill fit on the boobs, but nothing that's crazy. I think nothing that a good specific bra couldn't fix. Really nice texture. It's kind of thick for right now in the summer, but I think it'll be really, really pretty in the fall. But that was originally $102 and I was able to get that for $31.79. And finally, I got this really cute dress. It was very body con. It makes the boobs look good. I'm I'm with it. Um, it was It's a little short. It's very short actually, but the color is beautiful. I think the shaping is beautiful. My boobs are boobing. I like this dress. I think it's very, very cute. This was originally $51, but I got it for $27.55. So again, if you would like to check out ThreadUp, you can using the link down below and use code Kenny to get 35% off your first order plus free shipping. Big thanks again to ThreadUp for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. You don't bring my soul. You don't bring my soul. You don't bring my soul. You don't bring my show, everybody, everybody. Why did I mix two songs together? Okay, so last week uh, we talked about part five of Gabriel's Inferno, which is part two of Gabriel's Rapture, Passion Flicks. You know, with that series, it's not like I expect much, but every time they somehow limbo under my expectations, I really, I'm astounded in a way I didn't think were possible. <laughs> An approach that shows that they almost get the point of why this was a bad idea, but they keep, they, they like bang their face into the point every time. And it's just, it's remarkably bad. So if you wanna check that out, it'll be up above or you can check it out in the Bad Movies and a Beat playlist. This week I come to you with a bit of shame, okay? I was shown just simply the cover of this film, was told the people that were in it, and I said, absolutely 
fucking not. You cannot pay me to watch this movie, but apparently you can. One of my shortcomings, one of my things as a person is that I sometimes get too curious for my own good. The premise itself sounded so dreadful that you don't think your eyes would actually survive Vibe the viewing experience. Like your brain will turn to this like soft, malleable goo and your eyes will pop out of its sockets. Have you seen the movie with King Batch? Is that how you pronounce that? King Bach? <laughs> uh, he made a film called Where's the Money? A film that stars King Batch, Logan Paul, Method Man, Mike Epps, Terry Crews, the girl that played Bonnie in Vampire Diaries, Ned from Ned's Declassified, and the black lady from Good Girls. Where's the Money is a 2017 comedy about a guy named Dell, played by King ba Batch, who must, quote, infiltrate a privileged fraternity in order to recover a hidden stash of cash all before his unhinged uncle beats him to it. And again, initially I wanted no part of it. It just sounded terrible. It's also free on Tubi if you wanna partake. If you watch my midweek video from last week, I watched so many crime documentaries <laughs> that I was overwhelmed. I needed something that um, felt frivolous and pointless. So that's why I watched it. Um, I knew it would be bad. I knew it would be bad in a way that probably won't even be worth the viewing experience. But I figured it would be slightly less depressing as like literal crimes. <laughs> I said, okay, well, if I'm gonna watch this, I one will make a video on it because I'm not gonna watch King Batch for free. I'm just not gonna do it. I've never watched anything from this person other than one skit I saw that's punchline was like essay, so riveting. And him misspelling dead black people on his chest during the Floyd uh, protests. So, I'm not his prime demographic. <laughs> I would only watch it once, which is not what I usually do. I sit there, watch it uninterrupted, and then I watch it again, taking notes. But this one, I told myself, doesn't deserve that type of care. <laughs> it doesn't deserve that type of consideration and careful planning. I, I will say that maybe this is because I'm not particularly familiar with King Batch's style of comedy, but ooh, the, the movie relies heavily on racial comedy. I'm not opposed to well done, funny racial satire, but it's a very thin line and you have to be funny and the risks are too high to even take it a lot of times for people. And it doesn't help that he has somewhat of a, a reputation for being not great. And then you combine that with Logan Paul who is terrible. Um, he's more of like a back character, but he's there. So it doesn't make it funny. Like it's not funny. The movie's not funny. There was only one scene that I got like a little laugh out of me out of discomfort, but that was about it. So yeah, I watched it. So now you're gonna hear about it. Uh, if you wanna watch it, it's on Tubi for free. I don't recommend it. <laughs> I don't recommend spending your time on it, but if you'd like to just hear what's going on, I got you, babe. What the fuck is that? Do y'all see that? What the hell is that? So our movie begins with Dell, again, played by Batch, Botch, bitch, sorry. Played by him, uh, doing a voiceover about LA. It's the city of dreams and disparity. He's from South Central, and particularly an area that's only six blocks away from one of the most prestigious and affluent universities in the state. His family owns a business. They have a gym, largely there in the community to dissuade young people from getting into drugs or violence or gang stuff. You know, there to be a positive light into the community. Ironically, the gym got into a bit of turmoil because uh, Dell's father and uncle both went to jail for robbing people. So now the gym is in turmoil. Uh, is about to be closed down and is run only by Dell and his mother. The mother is the is Rita, Retta. She she does a good job in this movie because she does a good job in everything. But again, it's a it's me wondering what they got on Rita. But the gym is in disrepair. Throughout the movie, you'll hear the mom complaining about how uh, she needs Dell to fix things throughout the uh, gym particularly the AC. But Dell is too busy flirting with coworkers and dreaming of a master plan on how to keep the gym open. That is until one day he gets a call from Mike Epps who plays his father. He's like, hey, that money that I stole from the bank, I hid it in a house that is abandoned six blocks away from you. And if you need to save the gym, that money can help do it. 
Now, why he's just now telling him when he got locked up years and years and years ago is beyond me, but sure. But he's like, yeah, that money that me and your uncle stole years and years and years ago that I never brought up to you, that I'm gonna talk to you about in front of a security guard? The police never found it. So if you go over to that house, it should still be there. But apparently it's not gonna be simple to get this money that's been sitting there dormant for 10 years that no one's ever gotten up until this point now because his uncle, Terry Crews, has broken out of the jail, is in search of the money as we speak. Now it's a race against time to get there before the uncle does. The uncle is eccentric. He wants to shoot everyone, including his family members. He is apparently about that life. The girl that he has a crush on that works at the gym, I don't know what her name is. Her name gonna be Bonnie, because that's what she was in Vampire Diaries. And a third friend who I never caught his name. He kind of looked like a squirrel. I'm gonna call him squirrely. They all go to find the money and come to find out the abandoned house that used to be there has been turned into a frat house. It has been officially gentrified. Dell goes to the door, guess who opens it? Frat douche himself, Logan Paul. Dell infiltrates the frat by first posing as an inspector for the building. And one of the guys is a bit suspicious of him. Upon leaving though, he realizes that the frat is currently undergoing rush week. And so he decides that his ace in the hole is to pose as someone rushing the frat particularly as their token black person. His words, not mine. Now, being that this frat is all white, he thinks that his way to get in is to essentially utilize white guilt so that they have to bring him in as a token. And while he's there, he'll go searching for the money. Great, this is gonna be great. <laughs> like, I didn't expect much, but every time a movie like this surprises me by how bad of decisions were made. I can't help but be a little bit impressed. This movie is remarkably bad. So he goes into the first day to rush and realizes that uh, all the whites and all the minorities have been separated, segregated, if you will. Sorry, I got distracted by my puff. Dell goes into the room with the other minorities, naturally. And I've been sitting here thinking about how best to address this scene. Um, and I've decided that I won't. I will let, <laughs> I will let, I will let the scene kind of speak for itself. Kind of tall for an Asian is what they're saying. Me, I'm like, he's a human being. You guys know about the theme parties they had last year. No fly list. I've been working on the railroad. They want you to build a wall outside, right outside the front. They're like, he doesn't even speak English. I'm like, he does speak English, right? Yeah, after using this as a rallying point to get all the non-whites out of the house so that he has no one to contend against to be the singular token. Thank God they're gone, right? Don't worry, fellas, I'm one of the good ones. Thus begins Dell's initiation into the frat. They have one last issue being that the brother played by Ned's Declassified recognizes him as the guy who was posing as a building inspector. But being that no one in the frat wants to appear racist, they say to themselves, well, is it actually the same guy or do you think all black people look alike? There ends up being a, a sparring of words between two of the brothers. Again, it's another situation where I'll just let the movie speak for itself. Oh, and now he's a thief, hmm? Will you listen to me, man? I'm the least racist n you know. He continues on to exclaim that he couldn't possibly hate black people because he rides the bus. Um, again, for fear of being perceived as racist while being racist, they decide to initiate Dale. They have a conversation about the ghetto and how that is a racially charged thing to say. And Logan Paul of all people says, let's just all agree that it's a very, rough and confusing time being a white man in America right now. They then commence to put on their hoods. They're in the neighborhood trying to kidnap Dale for his initiation. Apparently there's a whole uh, rigmarole that they do. And while dressed in white hoods, they run into black people, particularly Method Man. I don't, again, what do they have on Method Man that got him to be in this movie? He's apparently like a friend of Dale's dad or, or knows of their family generally. Uh, later in the film, he refers to them as hood legends. I still don't really know what they, why they needed him in this movie other than to be sexy. That's a sexy old man. I'm not looking for a father figure but I am looking for a daddy. They go to the gym, get Dale to agree to being kidnapped, including all derogatory language that is said in the process. And thus begins the initiation. 
at which they have an internal discussion about whether or not they should change the terminology they've been using for uh, their pledges up until this moment, which, which had been until they got their first black member, slaves. And of course, for obvious reasons, that would send the frat into a bit of a tizzy. So they go to the black dude, ask him what is his take on being called a slave? And he says, no, which, Honestly, I didn't even know if he was gonna say that. I had no faith. <laughs> so the first task as a pledge is to clean the frat house with a toothbrush. Dell is like, well, I thought it was gonna be way worse than that, so I'm fine with that. And after that, Ned comes up to him, grabs his toothbrush and starts scrubbing his booty with it. I don't. It's obvious that this movie was written for children, but also that it's rated R. So I'm very confused by that. It feels like something written by a 12 year old. It feels like something written by a 12 year old. I think that's the word choice I need to put. If you're expecting it to look like something written by a 12 year old, then here it is. Angered by uh, Dell's lack of fear for the fraternity, I suppose. Uh, Ned brings him down to, that's not his name by the way, but I'm just calling him that because Ned's declassified. Ned brings him down to the basement that smells horrible because they have a hot tub in which a frat brother died in it about 15 years prior. They never explained whether or not they took the body out. <laughs> he died inside this hot tub and it's just nothing but the smell of his decaying body and vomit. I know it smelled crazy in there. Can you see the light leaving my eyes? I'm trying to get through this because I watched it. I don't want that to be in vain, but this movie is so not funny. It's like anti-funny. If I were in a good mood, it took that good mood away and told me to go f myself. Ned throws another toothbrush in there and tells him to go get it. He projectile vomits into the tub and uses that toothbrush to go and clean the apartment. And around this time is when I started to realize I don't even remember what this movie is about anymore. <laughs> and in walks Terry Crews. And then I remember. <laughs> what did y'all have on Terry Crews that he takes just any role? He's been in some truly terrible shit over the years. He plays a role that you have come to expect from Terry Crews, big, loud, and annoying. <laughs> and he's asking about the money, right? I forgot. That's what he's even in there for. The house that we left the money at is now a fraternity and suddenly you're back to school. Where'd you get the money for that? I know, I know the money is in a fraternity. I'm looking for it right now. He's like, okay, I give you two days to look for it or I'ma kill you and f your mama. The frat has a baby queue in which they all dress like babies and drink beer out of bottles. Sounds like a vibe. And while everyone is preoccupied, Dale tries to go and look for the money, but he isn't able to look much because Ned stops him before he can, because now it's time for the dating auction. The dating auction to raise money for charity where men go up and someone bids on them for a date. But Dale is like, um, I don't think I'm really keen on being auctioned as the black dude in the group. He's like, fine. You'll be the auctioneer, it's empowering. During the auction, he has his friends sneak in to bid on, I just realized there was no point of doing this. <laughs> he has his friends sneak in to the auction and bid on people, specifically Bonnie. She's supposed to bid on Ned for some reason. I don't know why, just for, I guess, the sequence of events that takes place after this, but, but we see each of the brothers go up and do their like appeal to the audience to try to get uh, uh, donations or bids, I should say. There's a chance to pull the trigger, put it down on you cause I'm a dope ass. Um, one guy does a very off color Bill Cosby quaaludes in the pudding joke. She eats the pudding, you put the quaaludes in the pudding. Fun. Uh, Logan Paul demonstrates his cartoonist sex with a blow up doll. But again, for some reason, Dale wants Bonnie to bid on Ned to distract specifically him. But I'm just like, why? <laughs> like, I don't. But she wins over Ned. He wants to impress her with something in the basement. Again, it, it's a dead body in a vat, accumulated water, scum, and vomit. And you're like, this is where I'm gonna bring my bitches at. But the problem is the other friend, the one that I called Squirrel is down there for some reason, hammering into the walls, looking for the money. But when Bonnie and Ned come downstairs, he rushes into the, he rushes into the tub. You can hide behind the couch. You can find a closet. So as a distraction, she convinces Ned to give her a lap dance. Of any 
scene that even got somewhat of a laugh from me, like a, <laughs> that's kind of funny. This scene was it. Uh, it was him like awkwardly dancing and trying to be sexy and her being like, yeah. Yeah. It's like Justin Bieber and Austin Powers had a baby and it's you. The rest of this is just disgusting because he crawls out of the vomit tub. Batch comes downstairs, Dale will come downstairs. They're trying to get this money out of the wall. He throws his vomit covered like thing. What is that called in front of the suit lapel? No. Takes that wet with dead body and vomit, puts it around his eyes. He's like, why is it wet? And she's like, how do you think it got that way? I wouldn't personally speak on my pussy like that, <laughs> but you know, he just think it's a little pungent. Like dead ass, this movie is driving me into an existential crisis right now. <laughs> I wanna be doing literally anything other than talking about this movie right now, but I have to because I have to make the viewing experience worth it for me. What am I supposed to do? Again, do I just, hold on to the knowledge of this film. I can't, I will die. I will literally drop dead. There's a tussle trying to get the money out of the wall. Somehow a rat appears. The guy's still blindfolded. He goes in thinking he's about to lick pussy and it ends up being a mouse. He just thinks it's like a, you know, a little retro 70s moment. But all that work was worth it theoretically because they finally got the money. Psych, no, they didn't. It's actually just a time capsule that one of the brothers from years ago put into the wall for some reason. So here we are with Uncle Terry, who's like, where is the money at and he's like I still don't have it there's like a weird sequence of events in which uh squirrely gets shot in the foot just casually and Terry threatens that if he doesn't get the money in 24 hours he's gonna shoot everybody up and f his mama again I don't know <laughs> and then because this is real cash um Dale goes to squirrely and he's like get me some rupees insulted right now that you would think that I'm the we got next time I need rupees I'll present it in a more diplomatic way but for now can you get me rupees Yes or no? Yeah, of course. And I'm like, what? what's the joke here? Y'all just chilling with a nigga that buys He's like, also, how is this funny? Where is the joke here? It's time for the final initiation. And this is when they all drink punch from a giant punch bowl. Dell puts Rufus in to make everyone pass out so that he can go and search for the money. But eventually he's able to find the money. But right then and there, somehow Terry gets into the house and knocks him out and takes it. Terry also ends up stealing some of the other money from the house and some other valuables. And then when Dell wakes up, all the white people in the house accuse him of stealing all the money. And then there's again, this racially charged thing of like, I knew you stole it. You only thought he stole it cause he's black. Dell is like, I don't, I didn't steal it, but I know who did, my uncle Terry. They all decide to band together, Ned, grudgingly because he doesn't trust him because you know brotherhood and all that so they go down to take down terry and apparently the white dudes outside had a cue to run in and run up on terry which they missed and instead they end up being seen by sexy ass method man who's outside for some reason again i don't know what he's i don't know what his point in this movie is eventually everyone's in the room for the final reveal that Dell is not a student at the university at all. He's just posing as a frat brother in order to steal the money that was in the basement. Ned is happy that he was correct in his racism and everyone just starts arguing. We're arguing over the money. Dell's talking about how he was doing it to save the gym for his mom. He somehow gets shot in the ass. And just when the argument seems to get so heavy that it's gonna end in violence, that AC that he was supposed to fix in the beginning of the movie, it falls on Terry and it kills him. That was kind of funny. His legs from under it was kind of funny. So they open the money and everyone gets a piece of it. I, again, I don't know what Method Man was there for, but sure. I love how Method Man's real name is Clifford. That's an old ass man named Clifford. Yeah. When he came out the womb, he was 58. So like, anyway. So yeah, but they all open the money. Everyone shares it. They're able to keep the gym open. The brothers come in to help with efforts at the gym for like a community activity. Him and Bonnie get together and start at college for real. And that's the end of the movie. That's time you and I will never get back. Um, I am sorry. You are welcome. Yeah, this movie's terrible. Um, I would even say bad enough that it's not even worth a hate watch. Like I consider not even doing a video because it's so bad without me saying anything. But also again, I needed to rationalize the time I had spent. And if I didn't, I don't know what I would, I don't know what I would do with myself. <laughs> I would just harbor that and just keep it for all eternity. I can't do that to myself. I love myself too much to do that. Again, I don't know what y'all had on these actors to get them to participate. Hope the debt was repaid because no one deserves to be blackmailed like that. He <laughs> he, it's like a comic book brow. <clears throat> I don't know if we'll ever fully recover from King Batch. <laughs> 
And just like Instagram skit comedy and YouTube skit comedy. I do have some hope in regards to TikTok comedy. I don't know if I'm just on the wrong side of TikTok, so I'm not seeing this particular type of media, but the media I'm seeing, genuinely funny, more of that. Hopefully this movie was the final straw and, and we, ne we never go back to this. But yeah, that is all for today, folks. If you like today's video, feel free to like today's video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. Shout outs again to our sponsor, ThreadUp. They'll be linked down below. You can get 35% off plus free shipping if you use my code Kenny. And if you have any other bat movies that you want me to check out, feel free to put those down in the comment section and I will see you guys next time.